Extracer from trims. How do trims work? How are they calculated? How are they reversed? So that you can understand what trim is and how it relates to a specific turbocharger and how following on from the T3, T4 video that I posted last night, what the actual trim 57 relates to or a trim 55 or a trim 84 etc etc. So what we're going to do today is we're going to reference the Garrett catalog. We're going to reference two catalogs. The latest volume 8 printed catalogue and we're going to reference the other older volume 4 and there's a reason for that because in the volume 4 they relied on clever people technical people to be able to calculate the trims and inducer exducer sizes or exducer inducer sizes from trim values so in the older version of the catalogue they only gave you one size but they gave you the trim and from those two you could calculate the other size so let's have a look over here Here's volume four. This is the volume four catalog, as you can see over there. It's the older catalog. And we are gonna go and turn to page 65, GTX 4202, okay? Let's start with the turbine side. Turbine side, they give you a wheel diameter. This is the inducer. It's always the larger side of the wheel, whether it be the compressor side or the turbine side. The larger side of the wheel, which is 82 mils, and a trim. They don't give you inducer extracer. They give you one size and a trim. Now, let's calculate how do you get to the other size. That's the inducer. That is, if you look at a shaft like this, this is not the shaft, but if you look at a shaft, that's the inducer, that's the extracer. Air inlet, air exit. Okay. So, you need a calculator for this, and let me explain. You're going to basically take the inducer size on the turbine side, larger size, 82 mils times 82 mils. So 82 squared gives you a value of 6724. Then you're going to take the trim divided by 100. Okay, now let's just basic maths. 84 is 84.0. If you divide that by 100, you will get 84, uh, sorry, you'll get 0.84. Okay, so 84.0 divided by 100 is 0.84. Everyone agree? I'm sure you do. So you will take the calculation that we've just got here, which is 82 squared, gives you 6724, times that by the trim divided by 100, 0.84, gives you a value, and then square root. 75.15 millimeters is what we get. Now let's write this on the board so we don't lose track. 4202R, red turbine, okay? So, turbine side. The inducer is 88, 82 millimeters, the trim is 84. So we'll say 82 squared equals 6724. Times by the trim divided by 100, which is actually 0.84 which will equal to, just get the calculator again, so it's 82 times 82 equals times 0 0.84, 5648.16, 5648.16. Which equals, which equals 75.15 millimeters. Exducer. 82 millimeter inducer squared will give you 6724 times by the trim which is 84 divided by 100 which relates to 0.84 gives you 5648.16 to the square root of will give you 75.15 let's verify that okay now let's go to the next volume uh, volume 8 book catalog GTX 4202 same turbocharger and Garrett give you the answer. 82 mil inducer, back to the older book, just to refresh your memory, 
82 million juicer. Trim, 84. Trim, 84. 75 mils. And 75 mils. So that is how a trim works. It's exactly the same in a compressor. Let's do it. So I'm going to use a blue pen for this. So that was the turbine. I'm also going to call this GTX 4202R. Excuse the writing. I'm writing all skew here. So let's get a reference. The larger side of the wheel, which in this case is the X juicer, is 102.3. Okay, so let's write this down. X juicer is 102.3 millimeters times by 102.3 millimeters equals, let's do the math, 102.3 times 102.3 equals 10465.29. times by trim divided by 100. In this case, the trim is, back to the book, 55 okay so the trim is 55 once it's divided by 100 it's 0.55 let me just show that to you quickly i'm going to press memory plus over here so we don't lose it For, uh, 55 divided by 100 is 0.55 okay so we're going to say memory recall that value times by 0.55 equals 5755.91 5755.9. We've rounded it up. 91. The square root of will give us, press the square root button over here, 75.86. 75.8. Let's verify that in the other book. 102 mil, 76. At 75.8, they've rounded it up to 76 mils. Okay, so let's get back into the trim discussion from yesterday and the T3, T4. M24, if you can remember, you have the housings, M24 on an AR70 TO4E family compressor housing, and the very same M24 on a much bigger GT45 family compressor housing, which is not T4 family, with a totally different AR. Both have got M24 on. So M24, to make things simple, make it a 24, cross it out. It means nothing, it's irrelevant, it's silly, it's a casting number. Do not identify or relate to a turbo using this number. The Trim 57. Now, let me show you through the book quickly. I'm just going to go into this catalog over here, and I want to show you a number of different trims. So here's a GT 4202. We just dealt with the, 40, the GTX 4202. This is the GT. Trim 53 on the compressor wheel. Back to the 4202. Trim 55. On the turbine, it's the same turbine wheel. Trim 84. Trim 84. Let's go back a couple of pages. Let's stop at the GT4088. This is a journal bearing turbocharger. It has a trim 54 on the compressor, a trim 83 on the turbine. Let's go to the GT4094R, which is your ball bearing turbo. Trim 52 on the compressor, trim 78 on the turbine. Let's go and find Here's another one, GT3582R, trim 56 and trim 84, but hold on a second, we just had a trim 84, let's go back to the GTX4202, trim 84 on the turbine side, GT3582R, GTX3582R, both have trim 84 on the turbine, trim 84 on the turbine, trim 84. So. Trim 57, trim 57 on a compressor wheel means nothing. It could relate to a hundred different wheels that have got the same trim for the purpose of calculating its inducer, exducer value. And the same goes for the turbine side. So when someone phones in and says, I'm looking for a M24, T3, T4, M24, trim 57, it means absolutely nothing. There's no such thing. 
if they are saying, I'm looking for a T3, T4 with a T3 stage 3, 451314-3, they are talking about this wheel here from yesterday's discussion, which has got a specific inducer, exducer size, tip height, and radius profile, together with a 442476-11 compressor wheel, which actually has a trim 57 calculation in it to calculate the inducer, exducer blades, that makes more sense. If you're phoning in and saying, I'm looking for a T3, T4. I want a T4 turbine wheel, but I want the 60-1 compressor. 409 is the part number. That gives us direct, factual, relevant information that we can actually use to identify what components the customer wants to put into that turbo. And the 60-1, the by the way, only has one compressor housing option, which is a 409 7222-2. That's the part number of the actual housing. It comes from Garrett, brand new, just like this, specifically machined for the 60-1. There's your compressor stage. You get a specific back plate with a part number, compressor housing with a part number, compressor wheel with a part number, and there is your compressor stage, T04E. Now he's asked for a T3 turbine. Well, which turbine? Are you looking for this sort of turbine? Are you looking for a V-band turbine housing, are you looking for a 61, 48, 82, 101, single scroll, twin, twin scroll, T3 in, four bolt out, there are so many variants. Maybe the customer will say, listen, I've heard great things about a 60-1 compressor wheel, I want that compressor wheel coupled together with a T3 on the other side, what do you recommend? And then we would ask the customer, what engine, what compression? What do you plan on boosting? What fuel are you gonna run? How much horsepower do you wanna make? And then we would work out compressor maps. Let's refer back to a book again. We would, we would work out and reference compressor maps, turbine pressure maps, and we would combine the right turbocharger, turbine housing, heat shield, turbine stage, bearing system, bearing housing. Do we need more oil flow or more pressure for that specific 360, either bolted down or not bolted down, thrust assembly, together with the 60-1 compressor? 60-1 compressor's got a massive thrust load. You never use a T3 shaft in combination with it unless you're using a very, very large AR, less back pressure turbine housing, so you can get some sort of equilibrium between the thrust loads, axial loads from the compressor to turbine. Anyway, we're running off uh, course here, but I hope that's helped you guys. Inducer, exducer calculation sizes of compressor and turbine are directly related to a trim number. And many compressors and many turbines have got the same trim 57, trim 84, trim 62, trim 53, whatever the case is, number. So I hope that's helped. I hope it shed a bit of light. If you need any, any more information, post comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time.